Boy, last night I actually had a really good time uh, watching Sleuthy Goosey over there on her stream with her fine ass. But anyways, uh, I watched her go over some of the recent documents and then I realized I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the recent filings and motions over here on this channel. Guys, uh, is it possible? It could be time to dismiss. That's what we will talk about. Plus, the state itself was asking for more money to prosecute, and they're okay with Brian Koberger getting more time for his alibi. Plus, I'm going to give you an update, a little small update on the Delphi case. I'm JB Gunner. This is Crime Time. Let's get on into it. Let's do it. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? As you guys know, I'm JB Gunner, and this is Crime Time. Man, I feel like I ain't been over here on this channel in a long-ass time. It's really early, so I sound like shit, but it is what it is. We're going to roll with it. Uh, guys, before we get into this story, I want to first and foremost say thank you to everybody that supports the channel. Regardless of the method you choose, whether it's Cash App, Patreon, Venmo, PayPal, or regardless of the channel that you support, I thank you guys, man. You guys, I couldn't do it without you, uh, especially as often as I do. You guys, the gun squad, mean the world to me if you two find my content valuable feel free to hit the links down below show your boy some love and by the way grace if you're watching yeah I, I definitely did get you i don't know if you saw my comment back to you but i definitely got your tip thank you so much beautiful all right so let's go ahead and get in by the way if while you're down there feel free to look at some of my other content if you're not you know on leftists or snowflakes you can go ahead and check out my political channel my live stream channel where we kind of have drinks and get kind of wild over there um gaming channel if you want to check that out whatever the fuck that's on you. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this story, because what we're going to be talking about in this video is some of the motions that have been recently filed. Now, I'm not going to sit here and talk too much about other YouTubers, because it's it's getting old. It's getting boring, because a lot of the, a lot of time, I think it's clear. We have the side that has already convicted Kohlberger, and then you get us critical thinkers, those people that, you know, think outside the box. That could be myself, Harsh, sleuthy. You, you, there could be a bunch of us. Uh, and, and it's not even that we're necessarily screaming Brian Koberger is innocent. We're just not willing to hang a, 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 an innocent man until he's found guilty. If the man's found guilty, hang him all you want. But a lot of you motherfuckers, like, like JLR, people like that, you motherfuckers are making videos at a creek while you're out there doing whatever the hell you do with creeks, saying, he's up shit creek, he's on his way. And I'm like, man, come on. You, and then the whole video, you don't say nothing. You just wanted to let us know you was at a creek thinking about Brian Kohlberger. I find that homo with shit. But that's on you. That's on you. Let's go ahead and get into this uh, first thing we're going to be talking about here today. Idaho prosecutors asked for additional $120,000 to pay for expert witnesses, exhibit displays, and transcripts for quadruple murder suspect Brian Koberger's upcoming trial. States trying to get some more bread for this shit. That's all right, because you're paying for the defense too, which normally I don't even like public defenders. I'm going to be dead honest with you. Normally I hate public defenders. Uh, Typically, they're called public pretenders because most public defender's job is to just get you to sign the plea deal. That's what a public pretender, a public pretender's job is to do, is to get you to sign the plea deal. But for some reason with Ann Taylor, I feel like she wants to make a name for herself, like a big name. And if you get Brian Koberger off right now, there's no hotter lawyer in the, in, 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 in the entire country. Let's just call it right now. In this entire country, there is one lawyer that's being looked at. That's being looked at with this type of intensity. And it is Ann Taylor. Let's go ahead and get back to this. It says, uh, prosecutors submitted the budget request to county officials on Tuesday. They asked for $135,000 in trial expenses instead of the usual $15,000 amount. Yeah, they're throwing everything at Kohlberger, right? They're trying to throw everything at him. Koberger's trial is set for October and expected to be lengthy and complex. Well, yeah. Well, here's what's so funny about it, though. If they got all the evidence, wrong one, if they got all the evidence that they claim that they have, or the two people that are anti Koberger claim that they have, why would it even be lengthy? I'm just asking. Like, if they got DNA, prove it. If they got uh, any kind of, I mean, to me, why would it be lengthy and complex? 
Because you need to hit a home run here. You got to prove him guilty without a, re- without a single doubt. And so far, you don't have anything. You got a very small amount of trace touch DNA that we don't even know yet if Brian Kohlberger is, matches that DNA. Well, I understand that 99% chance it's, it's his dad or it's someone that's related to his dad. I get that. But at the end of the day, that still doesn't put him there. That means something he's touched was at the murder scene. We don't even know if it's the same Elantra. Because I know you was looking for a 2011, right? This is 2015. I'm just saying that so far there's no home run evidence. Now, don't get me wrong. There's no home run evidence that sends Brian Koberger home either. But remember, we live in America. You're innocent until proven guilty. Brian Koberger doesn't have to prove his innocence. You have to prove his guilt without beyond a shadow of a doubt. Let's go ahead and get into this. Prosecutors preparing for the for the trial. Oh God damn it! Preparing for the trial of Idaho Mer- Brian Kohlberger is basically what it is. Are asking for a dramatic increase in funding to cover trial expenses. Late Tahoe County Prosecutor Bill Thompson submitted, submitted his annual budget request to county commissioners on Tuesday, asking for one hundred thirty-five thousand for trial expenses rather than the usual budget of fifteen thousand. We already know what Kohlberger's. Uh, charged with. The trial is set to begin October 2nd and is expected to be lengthy and complex as prosecutors seek the death penalty for Kohlberger. When the hell was that said? I'm sorry, did I miss something here? As prosecutors seek the death penalty for Kohlberger. I'm sorry. When the fuck did they say they were seeking the death penalty? I know this is a potential in this case, but it, the Daily Mail just make up some shit that none of us knew yet? Because I'm pretty positive that the prosecution hasn't said that they were seeking the death penalty at all at this point. It's hard to project exactly what's going to be involved, said Thompson, according to the Tribune. We, we know that it's not going to be cheap, and that's a valid point. Kohlberger's ready to take your ass to court. Thompson's budget request lists potential trial expenses, expenses including compensating expert witnesses, witness travel fees, transcript fees, and exhibit displays. It's, uh, uh, it's going to be an interesting trial. Kohlberger's being held without bail in the Lake County Jail, and his arraignment is at his arraignment in May. Judge entered a plea of not guilty for him when he stood silent. We pretty much know. Everything that happened with the gag order and all that, no, no need to go over that. So anyway, so basically the state is asking for mo- more money, but that's not why we're here. We're here for some other shit. We're here for some motions, and basically, essentially what we're going to end up seeing, in my opinion, is Kohlberger, he's going to, I, I believe Kohlberger and the defense is going to ask for uh, dismissal. That's the entire title of this video. I truly believe they're going to ask for dismissal because I believe they're going to prove his alibi. I believe if you look at their statements, they say they know there's exculpatory evidence. That that is a confident man. His lawyers, did you see how confident and smiley the lawyers were when they went and did the uh, gag order shit? These, him and his lawyers, have the faces of people that's confident for a reason. I don't think we're ever going to see a trial because I think these charges are going to get dismissed. Now, I don't think it's going to be right now, but at the end of the day, the minute they give him full discovery and they find everything, and most importantly, what you're going to see here is he keeps requesting the information, the, the proceedings of the grand jury. He believes, and Taylor believes, that there's going to be a sculptory evidence in the details of the grand jury. But let's go ahead and check this out. Let's see here. It says, so what this is, is this is the second judicial district. Oh, okay, we already know that. This is a motion to stay proceedings. For you guys that don't know what this, uh, here we go. Let's just go ahead and read it. Brian Koberger, by and through his attorney, Ann Taylor, basically means pause. Public defender hereby moves this court to stay all proceedings in the case pursuant to Idaho Code 2213. Mr. Koberger was indicted by a grand jury 
On May 16th, he filed a motion to make available the record of all proceedings of the grand jury pursuant to Idaho. You know what I'm saying? Basically, what this is, is they want this shit paused, stayed, until they get the information that they're requesting. Makes sense to me. Jury record and transcript and proposed order on May 30th, 2023. The parties are not able to reach agreement regarding the re- release of grand jury materials. I don't understand why this is a negotiation. In further opposition to Mr. Kobarger's motion for prepar- uh, preparation of grand jury records, on June 6, 2023, the state filed the state's supplemental response to the defendant's motions. A hearing is scheduled for June 26, 2023. That, oh, that's pretty close. To argue this contested matter. So we got a new court date. It's June 26. So I think we've already known that anyway. Mr. Koberger stood silent at his initial arraignment to preserve his rights to contest the indictment. That told you? That's exactly why he stood silent. He stood silent because he doesn't want to add validity to the indictment. He's contesting the indictment, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. We're seeing Brian Koberger, and this is exactly what I said on that day, is that this was probably him ultimately taking the steps towards challenging the grand jury indictment and contesting the entire grand jury indictment. I even made a video that talked about how he could challenge it and under what grounds. You guys have to check that out. Mr. Koberger stood silent. Okay, we, right. we he, he, he also asserted his right to a speedy trial pursuant to the United States and Idaho constitutions. Jury trial said to begin October 2nd. Time is of the essence. The argument, by the time this court hears argument on the preparation of the grand jury proceedings, almost six weeks will have passed from the time of the indictment. Preparation of the grand jury record will, will then take additional time. Mr. Koberger has the right and intends to contest the indictment. He's going to t- contest the whole thing. The Idaho Code allows the def- defense to seek a stay of proceedings. Within seven days after moving, uh, moving par- party discovers or by the exercise of, the, of diligence could have discovered the grounds, therefore. And in any event, before the trial jury is sworn to try the case, a party may move to stay the proceedings and in a criminal case to quash the indictment. Ooh, quash the indictment. Or for other appropriate relief on the ground of substantial failure to comply with this chapter in, sele- in selecting the grand or trial jury. Mr. Koberger seeks to stay the proceedings as appropriate relief while the matter of the grand jury record is uh, argued and prepared. He is exercising due diligence. He has exercised due diligence to discover the grounds upon which to file a motion to dismiss to how the grand jury was selected. He wants to he's he's do his due diligence to discover the grounds upon which uh, to file a motion to dismiss related on how the grand jury was selected. I love hearing that word dismiss. He has been de- he is being delayed through no fault of his own. Now remember, Koberger is a right to a fast and speedy trial. He did not waive it. Mr. Koberger's request to stay proceedings until the grand jury record is prepared and he has adequate time to contest the indictment should be granted. The remedies allowed in Idaho Code are the exclusive means by which a person accused of a crime may challenge a grand jury on the grounds that the jury was not selected in conformity with this chapter. A stay of proceedings is appropriate. So that's the first motion, a stay of proceedings. That's interesting. There's a couple more things here we're going to be going over. I want to get to the... Initial stuff right here. What's this one? State's response to the defendant's motion for an exception or in the alternative to extend time for compliance with IC code. Okay. Well, I think we'll we'll get to that here in just a second because there's a couple of these things we need to go over here. 
Okay, I believe. Uh, let's see. So I believe this is defendant's reply to state supplemental response to the defendant's motions regarding grand jury records and transcripts. Argument. Mr. Kohlberger has a legal right to challenge the grand jury indictment and the court should release all records requested in this motion. Mr. Kohlberger faces charges of four counts of first degree murder and one count of burglary. Because of the first degree murder charges, the state can file notice of intent to seek the death penalty. After Mr. Kohlberger's early January court appearance, counsel for Mr. Kohlberger and the state plan for a preliminary hearing scheduled the week of June 26. A preliminary hearing would have allowed the defense to challenge evidence the state claims to have against Mr. Kohlberger. The state, as in its option, as it is its option, chose to proceed with a secret grand jury. A, se- a grand jury was, uh, 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 I can't even see the word, impaneled at a time when the small community of Moscow, Idaho, had been exposed to six months of intense local, national, and international media coverage. Because the state has provided ex- extensive discovery, Mr. Koberger knows the exculpatory evidence exists. Look at that. Because the state has provided extensive discovery, Mr. Koberger knows that the exculpatory evidence exists. Yeah. Whether a fair and impartial panel of grand jurors was assembled amidst intense media coverage is a significant question the defense must evaluate. C-I-R-C-E-R, we've talked about these in previous videos. Whether inadmissible or exculpatory evidence was presented to the grand jury is a significant question the defense must evaluate, which makes sense to me. And while there are many other legal arguments Mr. Koberger may want presented, illustrate good cause for the defense need for all materials set forth. Hold on, what's this? Why does it say page two? Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're uh, okay. All right, we're in the right way. Mr. Koberger is entitled to pursue relief on a single error or cu- cumulative errors to determine if there is cum- communal, commun- commun- cum- cumulative, cumulative errors. Good, sorry, <laughs> it's eight o'clock in the morning. Good, good cause exists to review all items requested in this motion. Cumulative error exists when the cumulative effect of the errors and indiscretions, none of which alone might have been enough to tip the scale, operate to the defendant's prejudice by producing a biased grand jury. A series of errors, harmless in and of themselves, may in the aggregate show the absence of a fair trial. You know what? I'm concerned a little bit, right? I feel like they're really hammering home these technicalities of like the fair trial and shit. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, he should get a fair trial 100%. I'm worried that the defense, the defense is really harping on technicality. This is just part of the process, though. This is just part of the process. So I ain't too, I ain't too worried about it, right? Okay, here we go. Mr. Koberger is entitled to request the proceedings he stayed be stayed while he challenges the indictment. I love that fact that he's challenging it. The rules provide for the release of all items in a Mr. Koberger's motion with, without good cause. Mr. Koberger is requesting items listed in the Idaho Criminal Rule 6 and Idaho Codes, blah, blah, blah. Mr. Koberger is not seeking anything outside the rule or statute. Each portion, we go. The state's suggestion that he should listen to the audio recordings and/or review the transcript of incomplete proceedings merely adds delay to Mr. Koberger's ability to challenge the grand jury indictment. Essentially, Mr. Koberger is asked to look at some but not all, and then ask for more at a later time. Mr. Koberger's right to a, of a speedy trial has not been waived. That's very, very important. This this sort of delay would require either a waiver of his important right to a speedy trial or for counsel to represent him less than fully prepared. As Mr. Koberger, under separate but uh, contemporaneous 
filing is requesting that his case be stayed during the, during the now contested process of obtaining materials he must examine. Authority for a, for a stay is contained in Idaho code, blah, blah, blah. Mr. Koberger is acting with diligence to discover grounds upon which to challenge the indictment through a motion to dismiss. Have I already read this? No, I don't think so. The state's obstruction of release of the full grand jury proceedings is creating unnecessary delay. The case should be stayed until Mr. Koberger has complete access to all matters related to the grand jury proceedings and until such time as he can uh, file an Idaho Rule 48 motion to dismiss the indictment. Or as Mr. Koberger is requesting, the court should, should order all grand jury records released so the defense work can be done. I don't see what the problem with that is. I don't see what the problem with that is at all. The state's reliance on state blah, blah, blah for the standard that good cause is required is not accurate. Mr. Abdullah's grand jury proceeding were in 2014 before IC, ICR 62 was adopted in 2017. The rule does not require good cause, and even if it did, good cause exists in the explained, as explained earlier. In Mr. Abdullah's post-conviction case, he was arguing that grand jury transcripts that had not been included in the appellate record needed to be added and briefed as a subsequent issue. Mr. Abdullah wanted to argue that the grand jury term had expired. In this case, Mr. Koberger is asking for grand jury records immediately following his indictment and before jury trial. Not 10 years, not years later in a post-conviction proceeding. Well, she's getting spicy in this motherfucker, right? It is worth noting that Abdullah illustrates how issues such as this have plagued cases in the appellate realm. For decades, release of the grand jury records now allows Mr. Koberger's defense to provide representation. There we go. I don't know why I didn't make this fucker bigger from the start. That was my problem. The hell was my problem. That make at least that makes sense. What the fuck? <laughs> Anyways, to provide effective representation. Okay, Ms. Koberger seeks ask access to these records, whether selected or, or, or is that where I, is that where I start? Yeah, I believe so, Mr. Koberger. Seeks access to these records, whether sealed or under a qualified protective order. Defense counsel needs to be able to disclose the grand jury records to a defense team, including relative relevant experts, with the ad, ad, admonition that the record records are not to be copied or disturbed, dispersed. Defense counsel needs to be able to review the records with Mr. Koberger, but does not seek an order to provide him with a copy. They just need to review the records with him. They don't need an order to give him a copy. Additionally, the defense needs to be able to refer to the records in legal challenges or witness examination. To protect the sensitive nature of the records and pleadings referencing grand jury proceedings, any such pleadings can be submitted to the court with a motion to seal. Conclusion, Mr. Koberger is entitled to review all of these proceedings as set forth in his original motion. Um, although good case, good case is not required, it exists. I think we already did this. It exists because the grand jury was impaneled after six months of an intense coverage. We saw that. We've read all that. Yeah, okay, this must, okay, this is the end, essentially. We know about the errors. He does not object to the records being sealed, as clarified earlier. He agrees with the state that the grand juror notes should be included in the records provided. Should the court release only partial records or transcripts, Mr. Koberger requests a stay of all proceedings until a time, such time he is able to review. I think he's going, I think he's going for it, man. Idaho Criminal Rule 48, dismissal by the court. Dismissal on notion and notice. The court on notice to all parties may dismiss a criminal action on its own motion or on the motion of any party on either of the following grounds. Number one, for unnecessary delay, here we go, in presenting the charge to the grand jury or if the information is not filed 
within the time period prescribed by Rule 7 or for unnecessary delay in bringing the defendant to trial. That's a reason for dismissal right there. For any other reason, if the court concludes that dismissal will serve the ends of justice and the effective administration in the court's business. When a court dismisses a criminal action, the order of dismissal must state the court's reasons for dismissal. An order for dismissal is a bar to any other prosecution for the same offense. Of course. That's what he's going for. That's what he's going for, man. The state's response to the motion for an exception or in the alternate alternative to extend time for compliance with IC40, whatever. Comes now the state of Idaho by and through Latah County prosecuting attorney and respectfully submits the following response to the defense's motion. The state acknowledges that the discovery in this case is substantial and ongoing. The state also recognizes that this case is currently set for jury trial projected to last four to five, six weeks and starting in less than four months. Balancing the above, the state has no objection to the reasonable extension of time for the defense to comply with its obligations with the understanding and execution that the state will likewise have a reasonable period of time to respond to any preferred notice of alibi with additional understanding that any defense compliance... Okay, so basically this is about the alibi. It gets old and boring reading the motions, but you got to do it. You got to do it. So basically, what I've got here, what it seems to me, number one, they've extended his time to present an alibi. Uh, I still think he will present an alibi. Number two, Koberger wants all the fucking information. So he can file in his own words. Koberger wants to see all the information so he can get the exculpatory evidence and file for a motion of dismissal. He's ready. This motherfucker's ready. He's ready to file for a dismissal. Confident. I've been telling you, he's confident as fuck. And Taylor's confident as fuck. The prosecution seems a little goofy, to be perfectly honest. Prosecution's scared. They're not telling the families nothing. But the Koberger and the defense, they're smiling and dressed in suits and shit. I'm telling you, man. They got the wrong guy. They got the wrong guy. They're asking for more money for the budget so they can, they can try to win this case. Meanwhile, Koberger's smiling. You guys know where I stand. I don't think they've proven a goddamn thing. I don't think there's anything in terms of his guilt that they have proven at all. I'm not even sure necessarily that, that the DNA is connected. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You guys know my position on the phone pings. It's a 27 square mile radius. He only lived like eight miles from the house. I don't know. Oh, let me show y'all this. Let me show y'all this. Well, since we're here, let me show y'all this. We'll go back to here. Richard Allen's going to get off, too. Watch this shit. Richard Allen, let me show you what his request is. He goes to try, He goes to court today, not trial, for a bond hearing. Murdering two young girls in a small Indiana town in a case that made national headlines is back in court as his lawyers push to have key evidence thrown out. Richard Allen is charged with killing teenage best friends Abby Williams and Libby German back in 2017. Those two girls murdered while out walking in a remote area during a day off from school. The case went unsolved for years before Allen was arrested last October. And let's bring in News Nation national security analyst and former CIA officer Tracy Walter. She's also a former FBI special agent. Tracy, always good to see you. Thanks for joining. Thank you for having me, Marky. Yeah, you and I were talking briefly about this case just last night. Uh, court is reconvening on this in just a few hours. This was supposed to be a bail hearing, but now we know Richard Allen's legal team wants ballistic evidence disqualified. Uh, do you have any idea what, what that evidence might be? 
Look, I can only hypothesize really at this point because it's obviously a sealed motion. But what I'm thinking is that the key ballistic evidence here, at least from what I can see in the probable cause affidavit, is that unspent shell casing that was. So Richard Allen is wanting the unspent shell casing thrown out because the science is goofy. And I think he's going to get it. And let me tell you something. If you. Uh, if. The only reason they're able to fuck with Richard Allen is because that bullet casing is right there next to uh, the girls' dead bodies. Even though this wasn't a shooting case. Found next to German's body that matches one of the guns that Allen had at his home. And also, so many of the gruesome details have been kept under wraps from the public, but perhaps the best known piece of evidence you know, that recording from Libby's phone of a man telling the girls down the hill and that command launching that entire podcast on the story. How will that be used in the case? And are is his legal team also asking for that to be thrown out, do you think? So in my opinion, my my best guess is the legal team is really focusing on that ballistic evidence because exactly. that is what really is going to, quite frankly, put him at the scene of the crime. Yes, we have that very chilling, chilling audio recording, but we can't necessarily completely match it up to him. <coughs> you yes, can't prove with it. With a gun and with that ballistic and forensic evidence, we really can. And he has said- But I, I don't feel like that. Look, man, he lives there. He, he, he said he walked that trail all the time. You have no clue if he was out there hunting and shit. I'm just being honest. Multiple times, and that was in the probable cause affidavit, that he never let that gun out of his possession. He never let someone borrow it, and he had never lost it. And so I think that's probably mostly where the defense is going to focus today in terms of evidence suppression. Okay. And just, you know, in your crystal ball, how does this shake out? I mean, will the case be affected if a judge agrees to throw out that ballistic evidence? What does that mean for prosecution? So in my opinion, just with what I can see in the probable cause affidavit, and again, there is evidence that is obviously not in that affidavit that we haven't seen. I do think that if this evidence is not allowed to come into play, Bam. And the judge suppresses it, the prosecution could be in some trouble here. Now, certainly we have- Bam! Richard Allen's gonna try to get that ballistic shit thrown out today. Today. I mean, I don't think the judge is gonna make a decision on it today, but shit, it's a bond hearing. Maybe he walk, maybe he goes home today. I doubt it. You know what I mean? It, it, I doubt it tremendously. I don't know, man. Koberger's pushing for a dismissal. Richard Allen's gonna push for a dismissal. I'm gonna be right at the end on all these cases. Let me know in the comment section what you motherfuckers think. I love you guys so much. I'm JB Gunner. This is Crime Time. Let me know what you think. If you like what I do here, you want to support the channel, by all means, hit the links down below. Yeah, I didn't. I think I was pretty good today, don't you think? I didn't. I didn't fuck with Tyler Feller. I'm just saying. I'll see y'all next time. Peace out.